everyone. I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. Anthony Alfredo was part of history over the weekend as NASCAR Xfinity Series competed at Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course for the very first time. Anthony qualified his Lucas Oil Products number 21 inside the top 10 but ran into an issue on lap 3 when his window net came loose forcing him to make a pit stop. While working his way back through the field after going a lap down, Anthony made contact with another car, damaging the front end and forcing him to pit once again for repairs. Anthony returned to the track and worked his way back to grab a 20th place finish in his first NASCAR Xfinity Series road race. Up next for Anthony, dual events at Kentucky Speedway on July 9th and 10th. That's right. Thursday night on FS1 at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Well, everyone just wrapped up an eventful day here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, to say the least. Uh, first road course race in NASCAR Xfinity Series was fun in the beginning. Unfortunately, we, we didn't get off to a great start because the window net came unhooked and fell down lap two or so. And um, obviously, that's a safety issue. So you're forced to pit and fix it, get it hooked back up. Uh, so when we did that, we went a lap down, drove really hard to pass some of the lead lap cars, couldn't quite get our lap back, took the wave around, finally got back up there, we're battling inside probably top 12 or so, and had a great battle there for the end of the, the stage, and um, unfortunately later, uh, got into the back of someone who had no power steering, and they pulled off to the side, and there was nowhere to go, so killed the front end of the car, we had to come in and repair that, uh, and then went to the back of the field again, and fought hard to uh, in the last seven laps to go of the race to salvage a top 20 finish. So uh, I'll take it. I learned a lot at least and uh, a lot of positives. We finished the race, finished on the lead lap. Uh, just a frustrating day. Like I said, we were just playing catch up all day and had uh, a couple things go not go our way, but that's a part of it. These are the days that uh, you just got to build on and keep working hard after. Uh, just focus on the goals. The goal always remains the same to go win, win races and uh, have a successful day as possible every week. So uh, thank you for everyone for the support. I really appreciate Lucas Oil coming on board here at Indy. Uh, the car looked amazing. I love sporting the red, white, and blue on 4th of July. I hope everyone's having a great 4th with their family and friends and enjoyed watching the race on NBC Sports. Thank you. Jesse Love returned to the Arkham Menard Series West Series at Irwindale Speedway in his number 19 Napa Power Premium Plus Bill McAnally Racing Toyota just one week removed from his first career win at the Utah Motorsports Campus. The 15-year-old Menlo Park, California rookie never missed a beat, capturing the pole for the 125-lap event. Jesse dominated most of the race, but a late race restart cost him the lead, forcing him to battle back. Fortunately, another yellow flag flew, and Jesse was able to reclaim the lead on the restart to come away with his second ARCA win in seven days. Jesse leads the ARCA West Series in points and will be heading to Iowa on July 18th for an East-West combined ARCA Series race. In the meantime, Jesse will run the Power Eye Midget at Humboldt Speedway on Friday and Valley Speedway on Saturday and Sunday, all with Keith Coons Motorsports. Joey East and his Nate Clower Motorsports team went to new Stockton 99 Speedway for the Spears SRL Tour Race. He qualified 13th and worked hard to get inside the top 10 and even worked his way up to 5th by the halfway break at lap 65. Unfortunately, later in the race, Joey would get spun around and went 3 laps down due to the car not refiring. Joey finished in the 15th position. Next up for Joey, July 11th at Madera Speedway for the Nut Up Pro Late Model Series. Caden Honeycutt ran in the Red River Modified Tour for two nights of racing in his Dirt Modified. On night one, Caden raced at Southern Oklahoma Speedway where he won his heat race and finished third in the feature. After taking a night off to regroup, he made the trip to Heart of Texas Speedway. He finished second in his heat race and during the pill draw, he drew an 11th, which put him mid-pack for the feature event. Unfortunately, going into turn three on the first lap, Caden was involved in an incident that damaged the radiator. He managed to make it 16 more laps before overheating and pulling off for an 18th place finish. 
Hey guys, Kate Honeycutt here. Just want to give you guys a recap on how the weekend went in our limited modified for Jay Coon Racing. Uh, Wednesday, we went to Southern Oklahoma Speedway, won our heat race, finished third in the feature feature time. I kind of just over adjusted a little bit, trying some new stuff out on a different chassis that I'm not really familiar with, just trying new things and uh, ended up not working the way we wanted it to, but we're still learning about the car and uh, we'll just move on to more races. And uh, we ended up taking off Thursday, went Friday to Hardo Texas Speedway in Waco, Waco, Texas. And uh, we started fourth in our heat race and finished second. And uh, out of the two pills that I could have drawn, I drew an 11 instead of the five. Uh, so we kind of put ourselves back a little bit farther than we wanted to, just how the redraw works sometimes. And um, on the first lap, third turn, we kind of all piled up on the bottom, the front end, kind of a little uh, damaged. and. Uh, I had no idea that the radio was hurt. No one really told me that it was. I tried to get an official to tell me. He didn't really tell me the straight answer. Uh, and uh, we kind of bust the radiator. And we ran on 16 laps. And in the last four pace laps, that we just kind of got a little hot, overheated, and I ended up pulling off and finishing 18th. But it happens sometimes. It's just racing, dirt track racing. What can you do? And uh, next weekend, Friday, we're going to be back in our Red Rocket uh, Western Flyer car, uh, limited modified. So should be ready for that. Got the motor back in and really excited. And then Saturday, we're going to go back to Southern Oklahoma Speedway, but not in the limited mod. We're going to go in our crate late model, uh, dirt late model. It's going to be your first big track race that I'll be in. So we'll have to give that a go, see how that goes. And uh, we'll see you guys at the racetrack. Haley Constance was scheduled to run at Dimming Speedway in the 600 micro sprint, but Mother Nature had other plans and the event was rained out. However, she made her way to Evergreen Speedway to run in the Junior Hornet division. Haley brought out the broom, sweeping the event with qualifying and the feature victory. Next up for Haley, July 10th at Dimming Speedway for 600 micro sprints and July 11th in her junior late model at Wenatchee Valley Super Oval. Cassidy Hines raced in her legend car at Colorado National Speedway on July 4th and Intermountain Speedway on the 5th. At Colorado National Speedway, Cassidy ran two main events. The first was a 25 lap event where she started 14th after qualifying times were set by practice due to rain. Cassie managed to work her way inside the top 10 and finished in 8th position. That finish set her up to start 4th in the second main event, which was 30 laps. After the start, she was shuffled back into 11th, but worked her way back through the field to finish in 3rd place. She then traveled to Intermountain Speedway, where she qualified 7th, and in her heat race, she finished in the 2nd position. Unfortunately, the main event was rained out. Up next for Cassidy, Junior Late Models at Madera Speedway on July 11th. Hi everyone, I had a really long weekend of racing. On Saturday, I raced at Colorado National Speedway in my legend. On the first main, I didn't get quite the finish I was hoping for, but I did end up finishing eighth. And then in the second main, I got a really good finish and I ended up finishing third, so that was really good. And then on Sunday, I raced at Intermountain Speedway in my Legend. I qualified 7th and finished 2nd in my heat after leading it for 10 laps. Sadly, the main did get rained out, so we didn't get to finish that. But all in all, the weekend was pretty good. I would like to thank Kevin Stanky and Nick Cooper for helping me with the Legend on Friday during practice. And I would like to thank all of my sponsors, Frontier Restoration, SunWest Services, Impacted Wraps and Graphics, Ducks Unlimited, LL Acoustical. I'd like to thank all of you for all of your help. Gavin Graham was at Atlanta Motor Speedway for two days of action in the Thursday Thunder Series in his legend car racing in the Young Lions division. On day one, Gavin qualified second and had to battle hard on the outside through many difficult restarts. Throughout the race, the car became loose but Gavin continued to hold his ground and finished second. On day two, he qualified fifth, but then had to wait out a short rain delay. He worked his way up to second before getting spun from behind. The contact knocked the front bumper off and Gavin was forced to pit for repairs, ending a great run, eventually finishing in 11th. Well, that's a wrap for this week's Race Face Driver updates. And remember, 
If you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at Raceface.tv on demand. Don't miss Raceface Spotlight on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, this week featuring Caden Honeycutt. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. Don't forget to follow us on social media. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.